Welcome to TechWise TV. It is time once again for this year's challenge. All right, you got a shot at some big prizes. And your mission, should you choose to accept it, it's really quite simple. Three things. Number one, you got to watch video. That's the one you're watching right now. Not too hard. Number two, you're going to have to take a quiz. Okay, but number three, you get a shot at some really nice prizes, potentially. All right, but I'm most excited because this year's theme is B O Y D. Whoa, whoa, it's all whoa. about pause the frame, pause frame, pause frame. Wait a second, dude. B O Y D? No, it's B Y O D. No, no, it's bring on y'all's devices. No, no, bring your own device. Well, that doesn't sound as good. Fine. Fine, y you do it. <laughs> all right, Cisco has some incredible solutions for dealing with the dilemma of all this stuff coming on your network. Now, we're about to take you on a whirlwind tour of a few solutions in this area that may be just what you're looking for. Pay close attention, because you never know what details we share that may make the difference. Hey, not just us, but our good old friend Ike here is going to be helping out too. Looking for an agenda? Well, how about mobility, security, management, visibility? It's one network, one policy, one management. That sounds good. First up is mobility. We need to get a little bit of fundamentals here to get our baseline. So our friend Rob here has the latest fundamentals of Spatial Streams up next. Welcome to the fundamentals of Spatial Streams, or as I call it, wireless secrets revealed. How fast it all changes. 802.11g gave us 54 megabits per second. We cried for more, as we always do, and 802.11n arrived with hyperspace speeds of 300 megabits per second. And now, there are vendors offering 450, yet still under the 802.11n spec. I mean, what is happening here? It's good stuff, don't get me wrong, but you need to be careful. You know, we first need a little spatial orientation. 802.11n radios give us this 300 megabits per second in a two by two setup. That's two spatial streams times two channels times 75 megs per channel. Now, as long as you have matching transceivers on both ends of the link, highly important. These 450 meg promises are in what is called 3x3 three three radios. It's this extra spatial stream being added here. Now, there's nothing theoretically wrong with this, but you know what? It reminds me of a razor blade marketing. I mean, if two is twice as good as one, then three or more have got to be incredible. Maybe. MIMO, or multi-in, multi-out, allows multiple data streams to be sent simultaneously. It operates as a continuum, somewhere between pure diversity on one side and pure spatial multiplexing on the other. Pure diversity is all about reliability. The same data streams are being transmitted and received with multiple antennas, multiple copies that obviously give us a very reliable communication path. Spatial multiplexing is all about throughput. At this extreme, every radio is being used to send data, no copies. Everything is throwing data, and it can get up to 450 megabits per second. Now, deployments won't commonly be at either extreme. We all want to maximize the balance. It's all about reliable throughput. So 450 megs is really just potential throughput. You know, just for fun, you can go buy these access points, and let's see what the deployment might look like. Well, your, your users must be within 10 feet or less of the access point. It helps if you lower the ceilings to six feet or less. You know what, you're going to need to double the APs deployed, so you're going to still have the coverage you need. <laughs> you know, this is probably not a real world situation for anyone. At least none of us live in PowerPoint, right? Reality is that these transceivers must be able to back off on this speed at all cost stuff so they can adjust to their environmental conditions. This means that some part of the radio is going to have to give up its data transmission role to lend a hand with reliability instead. One crazy idea, how about we add a fourth radio? This would allow some offload for those other radios and let us see that throughput reliability combination that we so crave here. I mean, could that work? Adding a fourth radio means designing custom silicon. I mean, I can only think of one enterprise vendor with a street cred to pull something like that off. Of course, and this is good because it's not just a hardware accomplishment. This fourth radio gives us some really unique gains. It's called a 4x4 MIMO design, and the gains are enhanced performance for all clients, even the single-stream mobile client devices, not just the three-stream clients. There's two critical things happening here. First off, redundancy gain. 
The extra radio provides an additional dimension of freedom when resolving the transmitted signals. Remember this from college linear algebra? Now it's just four equations with only three unknowns. This alone accounts for at least a 10% increase in range. But that's only part of it. Even more important is diversity gain. Each receiver is going to experience differences in attenuation, delay, and phase shift. This is normal. When this interference gets real bad, it's called fading. A deep fade would be a very low signal level received on a particular antenna. For three spatial data streams, three good signals are needed so that all three data streams can be resolved. And if just one of them experiences deep fading, transmission fails, or at least it drops back to a lower transmission rate. Now, by comparison, with a 4x4 MIMO, you have a fourth team member allowing balance for any fade experienced on any antenna. What you have is diversity. It's the ability to balance and maximize the communication path. Now, one more thing to consider here when talking about real wireless deployments. We don't have control over the clients that need to connect, right? Remember when I reminded you about the 11 in spec requiring radios on both ends of each length, identical radios? How often is that really under your control? I mean, think about our wireless devices today. The client-side radials will most likely be single-streamed mobile devices and could be on any part of this alphabet soup of standards we have floating around. This is where transmit beamforming comes in. It's a very cool part of the 802.11 in spec that enables a wireless transmission to be shaped so that it arrives in phase at the receiver. Signals that arrive out of phase, well, they cancel each other out and cause that fading that we talked about. So 11 in beamforming is fantastic for maxing out your communication path, but it really only works with certain 802.11 in clients. I mean, you can forget about the A, B, or G radios. This is where Cisco Client Link kicks in. Client Link is able to measure the wireless channel often with as little as one packet and pre-compensate the transmission without any dependence on the client. It's a combination of beamforming and spatial multiplexing where all four transmit chains can be active even when there are fewer than four data streams. This gain on the signal to noise ratio is just part of how Client Link gets you better distance, higher reliability, and maximum availability for all of your clients, from your pro laptop to your battery sipping tablet faster speeds and more capacity for everyone. This is the kind of flexibility we all need. This new marketing gold mine around 450 megs with three spatial streams, yeah, it's, it's worth looking at. There's a lot of value to be had here, but don't get too enamored with what is possible. Make sure you're getting what you pay for. Four by four by three. That's always been the holy grail when it comes to designing wireless products. Are we ever gonna get there? As a matter of fact, we sure are. I've got a brand new Cisco AP3600 hot off the press. This access point is the house, baby. You can put this in your network and immediately, immediately notice some great changes on your network. Now, what a lot of folks like to ask me when it comes to this AP is really, what does that extra transceiver really buy me? Well, there's a couple things here. Just by plugging this extra transceiver, the transmitter receiver pair in here, we automatically get better performance, right? Because I do have a way to select the best signal uh, on this AP. It gives me tons better uh, mobile density. So now that when people are bringing their devices on the network, I can support a whole bunch more of them in a lot bigger area at a lot better speed. And let's just face it, with people actually being a lot more mobile, carrying three devices on them at once, we really wanna be able to give them that nice experience all over the network so they can have that really nice meaty, meaty context uh, that they're digging. Another really cool thing here that I like about the 3600 is that it also is built in with clean air. Now clean air, you know I've been a fan for a long time, uh, but now with the extra radio, the extra transceiver pair on here, um, it gives me the ability to have a lot better resolution, a lot better detail, and be able to home in on stuff a lot more, right? More radios, uh, more context, that's always good stuff as well. So when it comes right down to it, when I'm looking here um, at a great AP or looking to deploy one of these on my network, uh, I'm a huge, huge fan of 4x4x3. Four, by four, by four radios, four receivers, three spatial streams does give me the ability to, to really take advantage of really cool stuff like Client Link 2, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. But in the end, it all comes down to really what my users are experiencing, right? It gives them the ability to have a lot better performance to deliver really rich, rich media and a lot better coverage, a lot better density for a whole lot more devices. And that's what all my accountants like because I'm not out there spending a lot of money trying to support more devices. One AP to rule the world, baby, and that's a 3600.
And we're back live at the IT Championship, where the wireless downloading finals are just about to begin. A lot of tension on the ground as these two IT athletes prepare to battle it out in this very important event. And they're off. And what a start for Ike. To challenge the contestants, both access points are located far away and are also connecting multiple clients. And it looks like the other vendor is having a hard time handling the distance. You said it, Tom. These guys are both using 802.11N devices, but Cisco's AP is using four antennas for each radio, while the others only have three. Coming up on the finish here, and yes, it's a new world record. Cisco is 30% faster. Let's see that finish again in slow motion. Wow, incredible. Just mind-blowing. Tom, I took advantage of the Cisco client link technology to optimize the downlink connection to mobile clients, and the results speak for themselves. And Ike Theodore Willis with another gold for the Cisco team. We'll be back with more right after this. All right, good stuff on mobility. Now it's time to move on to security. And of course, of prime importance to this BYOD phenomenon that we're all dealing with is security and this notion of how do we get control of everything. And here we're talking about Cisco ISE, the Identity Services Engine. Right. And really what we're talking about is the fact that every user could be carrying multiple devices, multiple operating systems, not administered by the central office. I mean, I myself, I carry three devices at any given moment right. because I've got my pad, my phone, I've got my CS with me, this kind of stuff, because these are things I'm going to be using on a regular basis. That's right. So we can't tell users that they can only bring in certain devices, right, and then establish our control that way, correct? I mean, right, what's, right. What's well, important here with ISC? So ISC, the, the great thing about it is, in my opinion, from an engineering perspective, when we're designing out our environment, um, to support this is understanding that you know people do bring multiple devices. They, they do have three or more type of devices Easily. they're going to tote yeah. around um, and do this. So we can't really dictate that kind of policy because we're going to give people the options to, 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 to design and bring their network any way they want. Now, in a BYOD environment, enforcing policy and letting people be able to self-register their own devices so it doesn't put a burden on IP mm. or, or on the IT help desk. I mm. want to make sure that I liberate them from this whole BYOD type of policy, right? And But you're liberating them, and from an IT perspective, you're making it easier to deal with multiple devices, right? right. So first of all, we say ISE is about multiple device support. That becomes really critical. Yep. But you also mentioned this ease of use for the user, and I noticed you've set up here a, yep. uh, kind, of a kind of a small network representative of, of, of any situation, obviously expanded out for a company. We've got a switch, we've got our wireless access point, and we've got an iPad here. Is this representing a user coming in with that particular device? It does, let me go ahead and hold this up so we can uh, bring the camera in and tighten up on this dude just a little bit. Um, it really does, this is actually showing um, how the user can log in and then all the devices registered uh, mm -hmm. under their name. Now my user is using their same login account, which ISE provides that consistency across the network that now I've got a, a central warehouse to actually allow people to log in, find their policies, all their devices that are registered to their name are under here, so that now if that user happens to, let's say, lose this device or get stole in a coffee house or whatever, the one thing I don't want, or they sell it, maybe they just get tired of it, they upgrade whatever, you can delete it, the user can blacklist, blacklist it, it. Okay. to kind of keep people from getting on that network, and it gives them the control to do that without the intervention of IT to actually set this up. BYOD is more than just about supporting the user, it's about supporting the IT department. It's mm -hmm. about keeping our security people happy, and this type of component of ISC actually allows me to accomplish all three of those goals. Well, it's a balancing act, right? So yeah, any device, don't force the user to carry a specific one, make it easy for the user to administer themselves so we can have that balancing act with what the user needs and what the IT department needs. And then we have this notion of centralized policy, right? Yeah. So the idea is that we need to consolidate because policy is such a broad swath of things that oh, have to sure happen is. across the entire network, but everything now is being centralized through the ISE. What is critical there? What are we doing really different that you think is going to make that is really going to make that work for us? Well, it, it's the fact that I can make this network wide and have this to be a uh, a centralized device that I can consolidate um, all those different policies in there. That's going to allow me to give that flexibility for my devices or, or or policies or even limits to where people can go and do things. Mm -hmm. BYOD means bring your own device, but doesn't mean you can bring it your own device anywhere you want. Freedom you know? with limits. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So it's like, well, I still have got some intellectual property I need to protect. There's right. still some boundaries I've got to have on that because that's just how it works with data. Data is valuable. So from a security perspective, yeah, I want people to be able to use the network as freely as 
possible, it's still my responsibility to make sure all those policies are met. ISE gives me that ability to centralize, configure that stuff, and monitor it all from that one central location to see what's going on on my network. That's a real, real advantage. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, guys, so that's what it's about. It's one network, one policy, one management. Keep taking notes. Welcome back to the IT Championship, where we're just seconds away from our next event, the BYOD Secure Onboarding Finals. On your marks, get set, go! And they're off. Both competitors will now attempt to onboard devices to the network and modify their security policies. It's a neck and neck race. Hmm, it seems like Zach is working hard, don't you think? And check Ike's easy to use interface. Zach is now working on his last device, and he fell right into that trap. That's right, Tom. That was a jailbroken device that should not have been allowed on the network. Lucky for Ike, Cisco ISC has got dynamic profiling for posture, and that prevents these kinds of security problems. And I think Ike, yes, he's already modifying the security policy. That's the way to do it. It appears that the other vendor has multiple separate policy views compared to a single view with Cisco. Unbelievable. This poor guy's gonna be here all night. And Ike, yes, he's done. Sensational. Cisco proved today that they know the D in BYOD. Bring your own device. And Ike Willis with another amazing win for the Cisco team. We'll be back with more right after this. Now, with all these BYOD devices on your network, you may be wondering as an engineer, how am I monitoring the applications on here? Now, I brought in Sam Rao to actually talk about a brand new product, Prime Assurance... Manager. Okay, so this Prime Assurance Manager, number one, it's part of Cisco Prime. That's right. Which is definitely awesome. I mean, I love, love, love Cisco Prime. But the Assurance Manager, what's it actually assuring? Yeah, so basically when we are thinking of this BYOD environment, what users really need to know is if I have a BYOD device on my network, what are the users doing on that device, right. as well as what are the applications and services that are running, and how is it performing at that end user uh, location. So what Prime Assurance Manager really does is brings together visibility from the uh, end user perspective, from the site perspective, from the application perspective, to give the network administrators complete visibility into their network. Very cool. Well, I mean, because you always have, you know, sort of a dichotomy here. I really want people to bring their own devices on my network. That's okay. Um, and if I can secure them, that's even better. But now I want to make sure that they're actually performing correct. I want to be a service to the people. So right. I want, but so I, but now I actually can see that. So that really does complete the three-dimensional aspect of this. Exactly. And we can leverage a lot of different technologies to actually bring this together. Whether it is from multiple NAM devices, whether it is leveraging NetFlow, uh, MediaNet. So a lot of different technologies come together to provide this complete visibility. Oh, very cool. So it's an aggregator. It'll bring all those 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 pieces in. That's very cool. Wow, I didn't realize that. Now, for example, I'm looking at the San Francisco branch right here. Uh -huh. So I need to understand what are the different applications that are running on this particular branch. Uh, we can see some rich media applications, some you know some database applications, etc. Uh, we also can see how are the clients experiencing these applications, and this is possible whether it is for business critical uh, TCP based applications or for rich media applications like voice and video. Nice. And uh, uh, the uh, assurance manager also brings together visibility into the network devices themselves. So for example, if I have a branch router at this particular branch, I can see, for example, uh, what's the OS version, CPU, memory utilization, um, interfaces, what are the applications running on the interfaces. So really complete visibility into a site. Very cool, now that is very, very handy. That's awesome, okay. All right, what, what else do we get with uh, uh, Prime Assurance, obviously it does uh, a ton of stuff. What, what is this screen? Right, so now um, that we have looked at a site level view, we can look at an individual application. So for example, I'm looking at Citrix application here. So I can see a particular application, how is it performing at the different branches? What are the application servers and how are the application servers performing? Oh, wait how a minute, so, so oh, I don't mean to interrupt you here, but this, so, so now I've looked at a branch and now you're actually redoing a query on how this exclusive application is running all over? All over the network. Oh man, that is awesome, okay. 
um, as well as how the individual clients are actually experiencing this application. So from a site perspective, from an individual application perspective, and when we are talking specifically of a BYOD environment, what uh, administrators really care about is how is this end user experiencing the applications delivered on his end device. So here we can see, for example, for a specific end user, how much network resources this end user is consuming, and compare that with the experience other users are getting at that particular site. So I can compare that with a site summary, um, and then look at what exactly is the user doing on uh, the network. So especially in a BYOD environment, full visibility into the user. What is the user doing on the network, and what is the experience the user is getting for the applications delivered to his end device? Wow, you know, that's you know, I, I, I tell you, that is really cool. Um, BYOD is kind of always kind of, uh, from a networking side, I've been a little hesitant on, to be honest with you, because people bring in their own devices in. It makes me think my phone's going to be ringing at IT like crazy. But now we've got the provisioning side taken care of. You know, let the users do that. We've got the security policy. I mean, IC is great for, for a lot of different security things. But now we've truly pulled the blinders off and allow us to actually see how people are using the network, what their experience is, and really being able to act on that proactively. Right. And that's what it really is all about. Exactly. And we can look at alarms and thresholds and be very proactive in actually addressing any issues that users might face before they start complaining. Wow, Sam, this is, this is uh, an incredible part. Part of Prime and uh, really does just <laughs> really give you amazing visibility. Thank you so much for coming on TechWise. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Jimmy. Welcome back to the Wireless Troubleshooting Finals, where contestants are scored on their troubleshooting performance and they are also being graded for their presentation. Zach is now inspecting the problem he'll need to troubleshoot in his routine. Ooh, some nice maneuvers by Zach. A perfect double axle, double click. Now let's see Zach's troubleshooting skills. Zach is trying to fix radio interference problems. Mm, look at all that manual work. <laughs> yeah, and check out the video. So much work, but so little improvement. Ike is next. Let's see what he has to offer. Wow, a terrific triple twist launch of Cisco's Prime. And look at this. Tom, look how Cisco's clean air technology fixes the radio interference problem automatically. That's a big plus over all the manual work Zach had to do. But hold on, I don't think he's done. It looks like he's about to, and yes, the spin and click application level troubleshooting. Unbelievable. The system indicates application performance levels. Ike switches the priorities around. And look at the video quality now. Outstanding. Now, that's what I call true network visibility. Combine that with proactive interference control, and you got another perfect 10 for Ike and Cisco. All right, that was fast. Lots of juicy details. Let's get back and check our list, make sure we got everything straight. All right, one network, one policy, one management. That's all on the video. Check. All right, take the quiz. Okay, that's next. And then win something. Exactly, that's why we take the quiz. All right, well, big prizes will be announced soon. Just watch this space. But thank you so much for watching. You know what's next. It's the quiz. Good luck. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.